Hi, I'm Dave Lockwood, Extension Fruit and Nut Crop Specialist for the University of Tennessee. Today we're going to talk about site preparation for strawberries. The first thing we need to do is discuss site itself. Is it accessible? Are your customers able to get to you in a timely fashion? Or are you able to get to your market with fruit uh, without any problems? Then look at the field itself. Is it open to full sun? How high is it in comparison to surrounding land? A little bit of elevation will give you a, an advantage in regard to radiation frost issues or disease in that air will drain out into the lower areas. A slight slope on a, slope on a field is a good thing in that it encourages good air drainage. Now there is a point of course where the slopes get too severe and then they, we have other problems. The ideal soils for strawberries are those that are deep. A sandy loam is good, something that's high in organic matter content, and also a soil that's well drained, both internally and surface drainage. Water, both quantity and quality, are important things to consider. And also look at wildlife. Will it be necessary to do some supplemental things to protect your crop from wildlife damage? Then look across the fence to see what's happening next door. Uh, our adjacent agricultural operation is going to have an impact on what you're doing. And this is especially something to look at in, if you're looking at organic production. Don't use an undisturbed sod uh, field for, for strawberries. That is a field that's been in sod for many years prior to the time that you've uh, you want to plant can harbor a lot of root feeding grubs that could hurt the strawberry roots. So select a field that's been in cultivation for a few years before you plant. Likewise, don't follow up uh, verticillium susceptible crops such as pepper, eggplant, potato, and tomato with strawberries for up to five to eight years. Or if you're going to use a pre-plant fumigant, then you may be able to cut that time shorter. Site preparation involves several different things. Soil testing is very important, but I'm not going to spend much time on that because Mark is going to cover that in just a little bit. In the site, look at air drainage out of the field. So if you've got hedgerows or fence rows or, or ditch banks that have grown up that are going to slow down air drainage out of the field, then you want to do what you can to clean that up. The better air drainage you have out of the site, the more successful your disease control operations are going to be. Are there wet spots in the field that could cause marginal uh, production or loss of crop altogether? If so, can you drain those spots, say with tile drainage, or do you need to leave a, leave a portion of the field out or maybe even find another site altogether? Noxious weeds should be eliminated prior to planting, and uh, there are several things you can do, but if you want to help control weeds and increase soil organic matter, look at growing a cover crop for a year or more in advance of putting out the strawberries and use something like rye or sedan grass. There are herbicides that can be used to eliminate weeds and grasses. Make sure you look at the label of the material to make sure there are no restrictions. And also understand that there are pre-plant restrictions for various herbicides. That is, how many days must elapse between the time you put the chemical out and the time that you could plant the crop. And those are there for a good reason. And then lastly, let's look at rotation. If possible, try not to grow strawberries in the same field year after year after year. Rotate out uh, to a field that's not had strawberries for a while, and the longer the time uh, that that rotation involves, the better off you're going to be. In plastic culture, we use raised beds, uh, and raised beds uh, offer many uh, positive points. One of them is that they optimize internal water drainage. And also you see a reduced loss of soil moisture and nutrients because of the plastic that we're covering those beds with. The plastic also helps us in weed control. So if we go into the crop with a clean field, it's easier to keep it clean in the plastic culture field perhaps. Raised beds give us increased harvesting efficiency. Generally we see earlier harvest and a longer harvest period on a raised bed as opposed to a, a flat field. And we may see an increase in fruit size and yield as well. Part of that is due to the raised bed. Part of that may be due to the cultivars or the varieties that we're using on these raised beds. 
In building a raised bed, you want to make sure to use equipment that is specifically designed for deep plastic culture strawberry beds. That is, a, a vegetable better generally won't do a satisfactory job building a bed that's high enough or wide enough to do the job we need for strawberries. A deep bed will promote higher yields and of course the fruit's going to be further off the soil. Uh, you'll get less soil splash on the fruit as well. On a raised bed we're going to install drip irrigation or trickle irrigation on top of the bed and when you do that the orifices on the tubing needs to face upward. Ideally, the tubing should be buried an inch or two deep in the soil on top of the bed and make sure to close off the ends of the tubing. The better you can work the soil in advance of building the beds, the better off you're going to be. So the ideal uh, site should have plenty of soil to build a bed of the size you want and that soil should be worked down to the point that you'll get a nice smooth bed that will give you good plastic contact with the soil. Air pockets uh, where you have irregular shaped beds will slow down plant growth. Black plastic, usually about one to one and a quarter mil VIF or virtually impermeable film is used. And this uh, plastic should be sealed down on the sides. That is, it should be covered on the sides so that it's held down and uh, not vulnerable to be being blown up by the wind. In preparation uh, for plastic culture and building the raised bed, as I said, we want to build a high bed, ideally a bed height about 10 inches, and a bed that's slightly crowned so that it sheds water. The width of the bed at the base should be somewhere around 30 to 32 inches and narrow slightly to about 28 to 30 inches on top. As previously mentioned, we'll lay a trickle or drip irrigation line down on top of the bed in the center, or maybe even use two lines on some of the beds. And then we cover the bed with black plastic over the irrigation line. A good uh, better for strawberries uh, can do several things. That is, it can build the bed, it can fumigate the soil, lay the trickle system down, and cover the bed with plastic at the same time. And so proper site preparation and proper equipment uh, can give you a lot better job. The width of the plantings from the center of one bed to the center of another is about five feet. So this, this slide shows more detail on construction of the bed. As I mentioned, center to center from one bed to the next, about 60 inches or 5 feet. The width of a bed, 30, 32 inches at the base, tapering to about 28 to 30 inches on top. A bed about 10 inches in height and crowned so that it drops off about an inch and a half uh, from the center to the edge of the bed to give you good water drainage. Are you going to fumigate? And fumigation has a lot of beneficial effects on the, uh, strawberry production. It can reduce soil-borne fungal pathogens significantly, creating a lot more favorable environment for fruiting. It can lessen nematode populations, and the right fumigate can aid in weed control. If you're a new grower, or if you've not grown many strawberries before, you may want to look for somebody to custom fumigate your fields. Uh, fumigates Fumigation is, is a uh, tricky, it's a precise operation, and it's a dangerous operation. The fumigants that we use are quite toxic, and therefore uh, it is to your benefit to use somebody that's familiar with fumigating. You'll get a better job, and therefore the crop will profit from that, and you'll have fewer uh, people exposed to dangerous chemicals. In site preparation for fumigation, begin your preparation well in advance of planting, at least six weeks before planting. Uh, as you get within two to three weeks of, of fumigating, cultivate the soils again, eliminate large clods of soil or, or plant materials or other objects. Hopefully the soil should be at 50 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit when you fumigate and about 60 to 70 percent field capacity. In dry conditions, it may be necessary to uh, irrigate before fumigation. 
be aware of plant back restrictions for the fumigants. Uh, depending on the fumigant, it'll vary, but it's often 21 days or longer. And allow extra time for weather-related delays. If you're getting right down to the wire and you get a rain, you may not have adequate time to fumigate and get the, the plants in on time. So that's going to cover the, the site preparation, so we'll turn it over uh, for the next presentation. Thank you very much.